This review is sponsored by Karma. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what we need. Picture do. this, man. This All Max, Max Studio setup. Studio display. Should we pull the chair? Max Studio is an entire. <laughs> Cars this way. Yeah, the unboxing definitely didn't happen like that. In fact, we repackaged the whole thing to produce that whole cinematic movie magic. But here's how things actually went down. Upon my arrival at the office, I of course couldn't wait to open this baby up. The box, very similar to what we had with the 24 inch iMac, subtle details, box feels sturdy and good. Turning it around, all we need is this tab to pull away. Laying it down, you can see that the bottom does reveal the specs. I did want to get a base model to see how it would compete with my custom PC. And so opening it up, up top we have the design by Apple in California. And here, we definitely get a sticker which is always awesome to see and some papers that no one ever checks or read. Following the arrows, I like the fact that it reveals the Mac Studio quite nicely. And honestly, at 5.9 pounds, it's not that heavy considering the power it can deliver. You see, my old issue was that I used to lose electricity at home quite a lot and because my PC is a giant monster, I always got mad at the fact that I couldn't bring it to my girlfriends. But the fact that this is quite small is actually genius. Hear this out guys. It is actually so satisfying. And the last thing that you will find within this packaging is this braided black power cable. It's god tier. Probably not as god tier as Karma though. Two weeks ago, I did happen to buy the very last S22 Ultra in stock, but if your local Best Buy is out of them, I strongly suggest you check out Karma. Karma has been a long-term sponsor of ours because we use their Chrome extension to shop all the time. It is also an app and it ensures you never miss a price drop, a coupon code, or an item in stock when shopping online. It allows me to stay up to date with my tech and make sure I get the best prices for any holiday event. It keeps allowing us to find cool accessories for our videos at fair prices when I was shopping for example on Amazon. By clicking on the link down below, you can download Karma for free and add it as your Chrome extension. With it, you can visit your favorite stores, find an item of your choice like a Samsung S22 Ultra and click on the button slider to save your item. You can select when you want to be notified and what list you want to add the item to. I do get notifications via email or mobile push to know when my saved product goes on sale or comes back in stock. I've personally been creating lists when it comes to buying products for the videos so I can organize all my tech for the videos and help with impulsive purchases. At checkout, it is able to automatically scan the web for coupon codes, but note that this is a special feature only available on the computer. And when shopping at select retail stores, Karma gives cash back to you and a good cause. You can download Karma for free using the link in the description down below. Unboxing this and looking at it for the first time is a nice experience. The fact that you can pack so much power in this little machine is insane. It's also way smaller than my current ITX build and I really like that. Sort of allowing my desk setup to gain a lot more room so I can properly place these speakers. My current specs are very simple because, again, I went with a base model that includes a M1 Max with 512GB of SSD and a 32GB of unified RAM. Interestingly enough, the purpose of this new computer is for people that need the power, which is why they introduced their new M1 Ultra chip, and on paper, it's on a whole new level. It's essentially two M1 Max chips producing double the numbers including memory bandwidth, all thanks to their Ultra Fusion technology allowing latency to be almost negligible. So your PC can essentially determine how often values can be accessed from memory to compute things fast and deliver better performance when using apps. And that is done with the M1 Ultra, but I wanted to give this M1 Max a try to see if it can keep up with my custom PC. For starters, 
Luckily, this 80% recycled aluminum enclosure has great I.O. I was personally scared that I wasn't going to have enough ports, but I do. And the fun thing is that since a lot of my devices are USB-C, with 4 Thunderbolt ports, I am a happy camper. We have an Ethernet port that I've been using thanks to my Cisco Switch, power, a couple of USB 8 3.1 Gen 2 ports, a single HDMI 2.0 port which is surprising for such a machine, and an audio jack. All enough to have this whole mess that used to live behind my custom build transferred to this little guy right here. The difference between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra is not only the chip but also the front of the chassis. You see, these ports on my current model are regular 10GB per second USB-C ports, but on the M1 Ultra, they are Thunderbolt 4. At least the SDXC card slot is the same. All of this is packaged in this beautiful chassis that feels exactly like what we have on the MacBooks, although the logo on top is a lot larger. But the bottom exhaust grille is beautifully placed and well designed, probably to make both fans inside dissipate enough heat to avoid bottlenecking the system. Also, it's probably the reason as to why they went to the extent of making holes along the curved portion of the rear exhaust. As small as it is, it does weigh 5.9 pounds when opting for this model and 7.9 pounds when going for the Ultra, and most of that weight is towards the back of the device, which eventually made me wonder why, so I tried opening it up to see what was going on in there, and yeah, I didn't get too far. Apple makes these things impossible to tamper with, I wonder how the repair policy applies to this. But with all this hardware, the impressive thing is that it has a very similar footprint as the Mac Mini except that it's a few inches taller and all of this fuzz made me wonder how well it could perform. There are three workflows that I most care about and that's video editing, software development and gaming. Opening up my iPad video on the Premiere Pro timeline is absolutely amazing. In fact, I'd say it's way faster and more stable than my custom PC. Keep in mind this here is a huge project with tons of A7S Mark III footage which are huge files due to the codec we shoot on. Changing tabs to color grade footage is flawless and when it comes to tweaking the levels, I mean it's very responsive. Scrubbing through the timeline is not perfect but way more stable than our PC and I even went to the extent of adding some text like we usually do in order to see how it would behave laggy but it's very manageable. It's not bad at all considering that my PC took 12 minutes to render such video compared to the Mac which took about 11 minutes. It truly does perform in Premiere at first glance but the thing is that a long term review will definitely give you all a good perspective. As for software development, well two things I wanted to do. First, benchmark this machine on Xcode and second, throw Unity at it. And the best way of doing such things is by opening an Xcode benchmark compiling it and see how long it would take, which by the way it's a project that gets built through the CLI and outputs how long it takes. Part of the reason as to why I installed TG Pro so I could measure temperatures, which peak temperatures of around 39 degrees internally and externally about 28 degrees, it physically doesn't feel hot at all. Fans kicked in which realistically was expected. With 98 seconds to completion, I do have to say compared to my base model MacBook Pro 14 inch, it's not a big improvement. As for Unity, after installing this whole software and opening a starter template, Honestly, opening these types of projects takes a bit of time. I obviously need some more time with it, but in terms of first impressions, moving the world around does feel a bit laggy. Although moving objects, changing a few things within the whole world does feel smooth. Compiling this game in order to play took about what, like 2 seconds and while playing it, temperatures were fairly stable and it truly never got laggy. Game development could be great, but I'll try to make a more in-depth video about it. With that in mind, the big question is, can I use Parallels and Windows 11 to replicate my Valorant setup so I can still game with the boys? Sadly, not really, and that's mainly due to the fact that Valorant just doesn't want to run. However, I will say that Windows 11 is incredibly snappy when it comes to using it, whether that's opening up folders, closing down apps, interacting with UI components, or even opening up Steam. Although even Halo, I wasn't able to get it up and running. Now, built-in speakers on it aren't too bad, but I don't recommend using these as your standalone speakers. But like I 
said, having something like the Evo 4 connected to it is great, even if this 3.5mm headphone jack delivers advanced support for high impedance headphones. Overall, Wi-Fi 6 internet speeds seem to be fairly stable, but of course, once it's all plugged in via ethernet cable, speeds become way better. Look, the fact is that what seems to be a very powerful little machine that doesn't generate much fan noise to me is just great, mainly because I have this monstrosity of a PC constantly cooling itself down and it can get very loud, which I completely hate. I also hate the fact that the HDMI port is null 2.1 because without it, display support for higher resolutions and faster refresh rates is not possible. But since this isn't a gaming machine, I guess it doesn't truly matter. When you take a look at the big picture, this here is for creatives, whether you use Blender, DaVinci Resolve, Unity, and so on. I feel like this is for a very specific subset of individuals. And so I don't recommend getting one unless you need that much niche power. Niche power, is that even a word? Well, you get it, like power for those specific needs. I am going to be getting an M1 Ultra soon, and I'll be sure to make a video about it. For now, I think this could use a programming review. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.